Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in my series on writing Python scripts to extend the Krita drawing application. In this video I'm going to cover creating your own custom dockers, which if you'll notice over here in the Krita application window that I have running, dockers are these little sections of the user interface over here such as this one here that has the color selector in it or this one here that has the layer information in it. The dockers are just little toolboxes that exist on your UI that allow you to have direct and immediate access to whatever function that they have. Um, using Python, you can create your own custom dockers that can have your own widgets and stuff in them to allow you to do whatever you want to do. This is the second major type of object within Krita that you can create with Python, the first being extensions, which I covered in my previous video. And just like extensions, we're going to make uh, the custom Docker that we're going to create in this video in such a way that it is active when Krita is first started up. Now to begin with, as you can see, I have over here in this terminal window, I am in the local share Krita pi Krita directory, which if you'll recall from all of my previous videos, is the directory that I need to put in my .desktop files and any Python uh, custom libraries that I create in order for Critter to find them and use them. Now I've already actually created a couple of things for us to deal with regarding our example docker here uh, and as you can see they're right here at the very top. I have a directory called docker example which is going to actually contain the Python library that we're making and I have a docker example dot desktop file which if I go ahead and open that up you can see that it looks very similar to all the other ones that we've created it lists in the XKDE library section the Docker example library name, which will allow Critter to find the Docker example folder. And then it has a custom name and comment, which are, of course, required. So that desktop entry is not actually all of that different from what we've been doing before. And so we can go here to Docker example, the library directory here, and see that once again, it looks exactly like the one that we made for our test plugin and our extension. It has an init.py file. And it has docker-example.py, which is the actual Python library. If I open up init.py, you can see it looks like we expect. It says from docker example import all. This is exactly like all the other init.py files that we've created. The one that's going to look different, of course, is going to be docker-example.py, which is going to contain the custom information that is needed in order to create a Docker object, a custom Docker object. Now, what I have in this file here is actually a slightly modified template for the Docker Python example class that I got from Krita's official online documentation. And I will link this uh, below in the description so that you can get a copy of that template as well. But I'll go ahead and go line by line here to explain what everything means. Now the first lines should be pretty familiar at this point. We're just importing the classes and widgets that we need. The second line here says from Krita import all. Every one of our Krita scripts has that. And the top line here is saying from pyqt5.qt widgets import everything. Now, the reason that we're doing that is we're actually going to need access to a lot of the facilities that PyQ5 uses to assemble GUI objects. Because if you think about it, a Docker really is a pretty persistent part of the Krita GUI. And as such, it's going to make a lot of use of widgets and things like that that come from PyQ in order to assemble itself. All of these structures over here in the actual Krita window that I have um, like the color selector, like the layer selector, all of those dockers that exist in Krita already are assembled with widgets and other components of the of the Qt library. And so in order to make our own dockers in Python, we're going to need to have access to Qt as well and, or, and create our dockers visually out of those Qt widgets. Now next down here, we declare a class called Docker Example uh, that it inherits from the parent doc widget. Now, Docker Example is my custom name for this particular object. Uh, that will be different for you. Starting on line five here, you can see that we have the beginning of the init function, which is going to initialize the Docker Example object. And just like with the extension class, all we're really going to be doing here is we're going to be calling super, and then we're going to actually set the title of the Docker window. What that's going to cause to happen is over here, when the Docker appears in the Krita user interface, it's going to have a title above the top of it. You can see that here um, in the already existing Dockers, like advanced color selector. Uh, hopefully you can see that kind of grayed out advanced color selector right here underneath my mouse. Um, or the layers here for the layer docker, 
or the brush presets here for the brush presets docker. That's what we're setting here with this docker example string. We're saying that's going to appear as the title of the docker window that we create. Now I'm actually going to add some more code to this init function in a few minutes, but moving on to explain what's already here, we have another function here called canvas changed. Now every docker has to have the canvas changed function, but we're not actually going to make any changes to it for this simple example docker right here. As you can see, it's just passing right now. It doesn't do anything. So we can just ignore canvas change for now. The last line that's of, of importance here, and as you can see, it has a little bit of spillover because I've zoomed in, is critter.instance.addDocWidgetFactory. If you'll recall from when we made custom extensions, we had to, at the bottom of our extension file, tell Krita to add our custom extension to the Krita window. And that's exactly what we're doing here. This is the code for how to do that, uh, to add custom dockers to the Krita window. So whenever the Docker example library is loaded into Krita, this bottom line right here will cause Krita to incorporate a instance of the Docker example object into its own user interface. All right, now that I've gone over that, let's go ahead and actually create our custom Docker. Now, what I want this custom Docker to do is very simple. Just like the extension that we made in the previous video, if you've seen that, all this Docker is going to have is a little button that's going to appear inside the middle of it. And when we click it, it's going to bring up a little pop-up menu that's also going to have a button that will close out of it. This will work very, very similar to how the custom extension that we made in the previous video worked. It should be very simple and familiar to you at least in the function of the actual script if you've seen that previous video and this is not actually a very difficult thing to do the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make some modifications to the init function here we're going to add a couple of lines to begin with the first line is going to read main widget equals q widget and then in parentheses we will pass a reference to cell. This is going to create the main cute widget of our docker which can hold things like the button that we want to put in it the next thing that we want to say is self.set widget and then in parentheses main widget which is going to pass the main widget object that we just initialized to the docker's built-in set widget function basically all this is going to do is this is going to set our docker up so that we can have a graphical place to put things like as i said a button now the next thing that we want to do is actually to initialize a button and we're going to call it example button and we're going to say that's equal to Q push button, which is a push button cute widget object. And then in parentheses, we will pass two arguments to it. The first is going to be the text that appears on the button. And we'll just make that say show pop up. And the second argument that we're going to pass is going to be the Q widget to draw this button in. And that will be main widget the widget object that we just created to draw our button on. You can think of the main widget, which is just a Q widget, as a sort of canvas to paint your other widget objects onto. All right, now that we're done with that, the next line that we're going to write should read example button dot clicked dot connect and then in parentheses the name of the function that's going to be called whenever we connect this button. And we're going to call it self dot pop up. Now we've not actually made that class method yet, but we will in just a moment. And all that's going to do is it's going to contain the code to pop up a little window. And so what we're saying with this line is whenever we click this example button, Q push button, we want to call the self.popup method, which as I said, we'll make in just a moment. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to align this example button object that we've just created. If we were to go ahead and finish off the Docker example right now, it would be in a weird place on the Docker. So let's, let's kind of try to center it. First thing that we're going to do is set a layout for the main widget. So we'll say main widget dot set layout and then in parentheses Q V box layout and then open and closing parentheses empty and then close the outer parentheses here. Now that's going to create a layout, which is just a scheme for organizing widgets within widgets, and then apply that to the main widget object that we created, as I said, our canvas. And then the next line we're going to want to say main widget dot layout open and close parentheses dot add widget and then in parentheses the example button widget that we made a moment ago and that will actually cause our example button widget to be drawn in a visually appealing place on the docker when it's created and so with that we're actually done with the modifications that we're going to make to the init function now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create this self dot pop up method so i'll go ahead and do that now i'll say def pop up and then we only need to pass self to it colon and enter and if you recall from the last video all we need to do here is we need to put in the code for a q message box 
which is going to be the little click off window that pops up and we'll say dot information and then in parentheses Q widget and then a couple of strings the first string is going to be the title of the window and we'll just name that the same as our docker example class and the next string is going to be what actually appears as the text inside this little pop-up window and we'll just say it works which is exactly what we said in the previous video and with that we should have a fully functioning docker that we created ourselves so let's go ahead and write the changes and get out of here and we'll want to restart Krita to make it appear in the settings window so that we can enable the custom docker that we just created and this works just exactly like it did with the extension first we'll go to settings configure Krita and then down here to Python plugin manager and you'll see right over here docker example so we can click that and it gets enabled then we'll click OK and then we'll restart Krita one more time uh, and it looks like we have a error here it says error name self is not defined and then if we scroll down here to the end of the trace back you can see that it says the error occurs in our init function when we say self dot set window title docker example name self is not defined well that seems like a pretty strange error all right, I had a bit of an error in my code. Um, what I had actually done is I had copied this term here, doc widget, and put it into the init functions arguments, which obviously you should never do. Um, that was just an oversight on my part. So that's actually why we had that error that popped up. But I've gone ahead and fixed it here. I've changed the doc widget term that was here in the init uh, functions arguments just back to self. And so with that, we should be done. And we can go ahead and start Krita again. All right, it starts up. And if you can see down here in this bottom window, let me go ahead and close out of here you can see that we have the show pop-up button in our own custom docker and if we click it it works we get the little window that pops up and so with that we've created our own custom docker we can close out the little window here so yeah just like that you're done with it if you've been following along with this video you've created your own custom docker now and you can populate it with any kind of object that you can create out of the cute widgets that python uses to create its own user interface the PyCute library uh, is very good. It's very in-depth. There's a lot of documentation on it specifically that is a lot of help when it comes to creating your own Docker objects and even your own objects with just regular extensions that you might populate the rest of your UI with. So you'll definitely want to refer to that documentation, which I will link in the description below. Using that, you can do just about anything. You can create all of these Dockers that previously exist and you can make ones that do all kinds of crazy things basically anything you can think of. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. This is probably going to be the second to last video in my series about Python scripting and Krita. So the next one should be the final one. And I'm going to cover some things in the next video about making better plugins, like creating manuals for them or customizable shortcuts. But we'll get to that in the next video. And uh, thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.